Hello, welcome back to the Mike Pecky Coaches Show. I'm your host, Brian Dunseth. That is soccer ball coach, Mike Pecky. Mike, two weeks off. <laughs> you love that. Hello. Two weeks Hello. off uh, from a World Cup break in terms of Re Major League Soccer, Real Salt Lake. I keep staring at that. I feel like the Bruce, uh, Bruce Springsteen Fender t-shirt over there. There's a story behind that. Well, yeah, there is. But before we get to that, Brian, it's been two weeks off. Three. Three. Three, yeah, three weeks since we've done the show. I miss you, man. I missed you. It's, I miss like, you. A, it's I, like a therapy I, session. I Get in here. Time. Get in here. I don't want to lose my I miss you, buddy. I really do. Yeah. I, I, that's, a, that's a fact. I'm not oh, just yeah. doing that for posture. Um, <laughs> I've had some dunny withdrawals. The shirt. Um, yes, I consider myself a music man, a music fan. Can you play guitar? I consider myself the, now follow me here, okay. the greatest, worst guitarist in the history of music. Um, okay, I, uh, is there a Foo Fighters reference? No, in, no, 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 no is reference. Is there, is it just an air guitar? Is nope. there video games nope. involved? acoustic guitar. Okay. I have about three or four guitars at my house for the last 12 years. Three of them have about dust about a, an inch thick on them. The other one has about a, about a half an inch thick dust. When I say that I'm the best worst guitarist ever, you always hear someone play like he's the worst. I could play probably the first three chords of about 35 songs okay. and it sounds good. Really? But I've never cared to learn the rest of them or had the patience. So I could literally, I've sat with my wife and kids so many <laughs> times and be like, bum, 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 bum. what song is that? You hear that? Yeah. What song is that? And they're like, the hell's wrong with you? And that's all so you I'm got. the best, worst guitarist of history. All right. I so like this it. is a Father's Day gift, one of a couple, and uh, it's American flag, Fender, and I love it. Nice. Felt like it debut, through debut, through. debut yeah. it on the show tonight. I like it. I like it. Uh, while we were away, um, there was this little thing that started uh, called the World Cup. Um, fascinating time for everyone involved. And uh, this small tournament kicking off in Russia, a lot of questions coming in. What would the atmosphere be like? What would the security be like? We know there's this crazy Rosh's fan group that are probably going to go into the woods and beat the living hell out of one another. Great YouTube videos, by And the way. that might happen. Uh, but this only happens because it is such a big deal. And, and the mass population gets behind it uh, every four years or so. So, Mike, um, how do you, I guess narrow down, whittle down what your favorite part of the World Cup is. Okay. Before we get to that, which we're going to answer right now, can you promise me one thing? Okay. Before the show ends, because I'm going to forget. Yeah. You have to promise me you remember this. I need to know what that scar was on your head. But this you scar. Did, you just went through this whole long thing, so I don't want to just jump in now. This scar? Yeah. There's a scar I'm noticing I've never noticed before. Not that I stare at Dunny a lot, guys, just, just so we know that. We'll talk about that. You promise you remind me? Yeah, I'll remind Tyler, you. get his earpiece at the end of the show. I'll remind, remind him. him. Okay, so the question you said after that beautiful intro was what about the World Cup is th that I focus on? Or? Out of all that, that's what you took was the question of what it That's what I took, you know? <laughs> I'm looking at that damn scar while you're talking about it. What get is your favorite part of the World Cup okay. so far, Mike? My, my favorite part of the World Cup so far yeah. or the World Cup in general? Let's go with general first. Okay, in general is that it's every four years. Yeah. Um, to me, I was reading a tweet today. Uh, and, and the tweet was something directed at Fox about how they're praising Russia mm. and the Russia's put on a great this yeah. and that. And it got the into Stalin. The, the, whole, the, yeah, Stalin. the whole political side of it. And I, I was a bit offended by that because to me, sport transcends politics, mm. race, religion, uh, sexual, pre all that stuff. Sports does and should transcend that. And that's what I love about the World Cup. Um, having said that, you know, you, when you look at, which I'm sure we're going to talk about in a little bit, when you look at 2026, when we have three nations uh, uh, joining, hosting, yeah. political things are going to come in. And, and I would say that I love that aspect of it because right now with Mexico and us and all, what's going on yeah. politically is that it, it's going to bring people together. No doubt. So what I love about the World Cup every four years, uh, 32 nations going up to 40. Uh, 36 to 42. 36 to 42. No, 48. 48. 48. Uh, whatever the number is. Um, I just love every four years and, and the drama that in, unfolds before it. I mean, did you see Maradona today? I mean, did you see, you know, did you see the reactions? Uh, wait, Maradona partying and dancing? <laughs> Maradona dropping the double birds to the fans underneath All him? All of that or stuff. Or Maradona being drug out of the stadium because he can't walk I'm anymore. not condoning any of that. I'm just trying to figure out which, le like, that, that should be the test for our next show. Which level of Diego Maradona are you? Well, if they're going to submit Maradona into the dictionary, that'll be the newest word. All that's going to fall under <laughs> it is going to be, instead of like, you know, the adjective, like this and that, it's going to be this, this long.
wrong. I mean, the drama with the VAR, mm. um, you know, what's going on with Messi, and all of a sudden Argentina yeah. comes back from the dead. I mean, all that stuff, it's just every four years you wait for it, and perhaps I build it up so much that it's that meaningful to me, because it's every four years. Yeah. It's not every year or something. Uh, it's just every little bit dramatic thing or every little bit of a last minute thing in the game becomes from this exciting to this exciting. Because it, it's, it's different now. Obviously, worst case scenario, we failed to qualify for yep. the World Cup. United States not being a part of the World Cup. So then it, 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 we're, we're neutrals, yep. but we're neutrals with maybe a different angle. Like I, I'm Benedict Dunseth. I enjoy, I want to I wanna support Mexico this World Cup. So you enjoy Mexico watching the play or are you supporting them? I'm supporting them supporting as them. The, the best team coming out of the CONCACAF yep. region. And I absolutely, I thought Juan Carlos Osorio was the biggest fraud there was in <laughs> soccer coaching. But I, he's he went to my college. He was my assistant coach in 2000 yeah. in New York, head coach in 09. I, I thought he was a complete fraud. I thought with the notebook and the yeah. little notes and all, I the thought professor. it was a joke. Yeah, the Tinker Man. <laughs> but he's, he's changed my perspective. He has had 50 games in charge. He's had 50 different lineups. And the guy's an absolute proven winner. Yeah. Um, being down in Mexico and watching the game, fans still hate him. Everybody focuses on the seven. What is it? Seven one. They lost to Chile. Seven one. Seven yeah, nothing. Six, seven one. Whatever it was. Chile. Everybody focuses on that. Yeah. Of course. Um, but Juan Carlos Osorio. I I am enjoying watching Mexico play. I cannot root for them. I can. And it has nothing. To, and I'll save the, room for the you thing. in the knockout rounds. So you can come jump on the. It box. has nothing to do. It has nothing to do with political or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's that you know you you probably represent the U.S. a yeah. lot a lot more than I have. I think I have two caps or something like that. But it's just that, that thing in me that there was, you know, watching those games when Kobe Jones getting his head split open, yeah. Brian McBride, head split open, yeah. Pablo Mastroeni, you know, getting two-footed and stuff. His head wouldn't be split open because all the dress. <laughs> it was, like, dress, it was yeah. like, it yeah. just bounce off. <laughs> and, no. and he was always so tight and pulled yes. and, and shiny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Pablito. So that's why I cannot find, bring myself to say I want Mexico to win. Mm -hmm. And actually I had a, had a little debate with my 10-year-old. Uh, uh, the other day, he says, okay. he says, I love Chicharito. And I was like, what are you talking about? So my point is, we'll go back to what I said originally, the political thing, not to do with politics yeah, or anything yeah. like that. Because in, 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 the, in the 2026 World Cup, when they're with us, I think it's going to be an awesome thing. Yeah. Um, but I do enjoy watching them play. Okay. I am shocked, not shocked, I, I am, yeah, a bit shocked at the Germany result and, 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 and where they are in the group and yeah. how they're playing and the game plan they followed. And I'm enjoying watching them play, but I can't root for them. Yeah, uh, really quick, just to clarify why I'm a fan mm. of Mexico. Because I've played against them. I've been spit yeah. on, I've been kicked, I've been yeah. punched, I've been booted up and down the field. Growing up in Southern California, grew up w w with a ton of families around us that, that were Mexican family, Mexican culture. And getting to know Paco Palencia, uh, uh, Ramon Ramirez, yeah. Claudio Suarez, El Emperador, kind of the old school generation of Mexico. I got into their psyche and understood kind of what was their motivation, what was their background, what was their experiences, much like we have in Major League Soccer, getting with all of these different melting pot yep. nationalities coming together in a locker room. And I found myself not only relating because of my background in Southern California and growing up in, in, in the Mexican culture in Southern California, but I respected so much where they came from. I get it. That, I, that those, I respect that. Those experiences where I hated them, I turned it into... I turned it into a respect. Yeah. And so that's why I'm Benedict Dunseth. And by the way, I had Richard Motzkin as an agent. The, the biggest issue right now, I'm Benedict Dunseth, and I'm not getting Wells Fargo money like Alexi Lawless. You just Lawless killed me. I was, about, I was Donovan. about to say, this net of the proceeds goes to, <laughs> to Wells, Wells Fargo, Fargo or no, something like that. I wish because I had the same agent, yeah. uh, and I blew that. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm enjoying watching them play, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see where they go from here. There's a lot of talk, I'm sure you know more than me, that is, is Juan Carlos Osorio the next U.S. manager? Mm. Is he the next Colombian manager? Mm. Or does he stay with El Tri? I mean, he's, uh, he's done well. Yeah, he has. Uh, soccer transcends sports, obviously, grabs the attention of kind of the everybody's, uh, not just the soccer fans. So how do the non-soccer people in your life, on, on the peripheral of your circle, um, absorb a World Cup? Well... Let's go back to uh, 2002 World Cup in South Korea, was it? South Korea and Japan. South Korea and Japan. Um, I was playing with New York Metro Stars at that point. Um, the, the games were early, early, early. Morning. Yeah. Yeah. And I lived in Hoboken, right outside of New York City. Uh, my wife and I, before kids, BK, before kids, easier times, mm -hmm. um, we would go into New York City. 
uh, Navarre Smiths, yeah. you know, very big soccer bars, soccer pubs type places. And I bought a couple of friends and a couple of family members in various games who not only didn't know much about soccer, but would, would nag on me saying they, they're NFL guys, they don't like soccer. <laughs> and just seeing that group of people be together with uh, shoulder to shoulder packed, yeah. you know, jumping up and down. I mean, they, I remember one of the games we went to was uh, South Korea was playing and they won, they won a big game. And obviously we're not South Korean and they were just jumping up and down with everybody else and yelling and screaming. Uh, so I think the average fan, just like I've always said to my wife, you want to go to a country music concert? I'm not a country music fan. Guarantee I'll have the best time of my life, even yeah. if I don't like, yeah. I don't like yeah. uh, country music. But the environment alone brings people together. You know, events like this, and I think the World Cup is obviously the most watched and the most followed sporting event in, in, in the world yeah. every four years, or you know, in, in history. Uh, so even the casual fan, once they get wrapped up in certain things like this, meeting new people, meeting new people from different, yeah. uh, you know, countries that are supporting and hearing the backstories over a couple of beers. Yeah. Um, that to me is uh, is huge. And, and so I have trans, I, I have brought on family members and friends into this realm during the World Cup that otherwise would not. Yeah, I mean, just watching it, you see like the Senegalese fans, you yeah. see the Nigerian fans, the Peruvian fans, yeah. just to name a few, kind of the atmosphere. How about the, pa I'm sorry, how about the Panama? Um, Panamanians. Panamanians. Incredible. What they lose the goal? other day? They 6-1 six -one six -one. to England. Felipe Beloy scores. The one goal. And you would have thought they were lifting the trophy. It had to have been on the Richter scale of some earthquake magnitude. Yeah. And, and to me, that's unbelievable. You know, they, they understand their team's not going to win the World Cup. Yeah. You know, they, they made it to the World Cup. And, and, and to me, that, that's any joy you could bring into people's lives like that. I mean, they, they're still talking about that. They're going to tell their grandkids about yeah. where they were when Panama scored the one goal at a 6-1 loss. By the way, in Mexico City, when Chucky Lozano scored against Germany, it registers, it registers I'm sure. as an earthquake. Of course. Because all the Mexican fans are jumping up and down yep. in Mexico City. Absolutely crazy. Uh, but the World Cup, it's, it's a funky setup because obviously it takes four years. You've got to go through different tournaments, different qualification project, uh, different qualification Process. tournaments and processes. Um, and then you get to the tournament and you get three games. And as we've seen in this tournament, after two games, teams have already been eliminated. I yeah. think it was six teams had been eliminated after two games. As a coaching staff, I know you've always been clear and upfront about what the national team means to your players, the opportunity, and you would never hold them back. But that still takes some navigating of how you prepare, how you build your roster, how you think about training sessions, how you set up your team. When Albert went for the two friendlies, you had to make massive adjustments in your midfield. So I guess how do you find that balance of knowing it's the penultimate event, uh, it takes a long process to get there, which will affect domestic campaigns. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, you said it all. It's, it's like literally a 50-50 split down the middle for me is that I'm so happy for whoever on my team gets the recognition, gets the honor of representing their country, yeah. but I'm paid to win games, to win games and, yeah. and to do something, you know? And, and it's not only, I mean, Albert, let's take Albert for example. When he leaves Salt Lake and flies to where he's gonna play, it's not a six hour flight. No. It's a 15, 16 hour yeah. double leg, this and that. So he could come back three days before the game, uh, but he is literally 20, 20 days before the game physically yeah. and mentally. Um, you have to adjust, you have to adapt, you know, you adapt or you die. You know, and that's why you have to build a roster. And I don't think any coach in this league and any league in the world is 100% satisfied with every player on their roster. Mm. It's a fact. Yeah. You, know, you always want to be better, but you have to trust in who you have there that could fill in. And then you have to perhaps think about if that person who's specifically for that position is not in your plans, well, where can you pull somewhere else? The amount of times we've talked about, uh, uh, and, and don't quote me on this, I'm just making an example, Savarino, yeah. pulling him in when Albert's gone, you know? Yeah. Or uh, pulling in um, Plata or dropping back Luis. You know, we have so many discussions regarding these things, and it's a pain in the ass, to be honest with you. But <laughs> it is what it is, and you have to adapt, and you have to plan for that in preseason, looking ahead of uh, when the national team schedule is and, and who possibly could go, and you, you circle those games on the calendar and say, okay, we have to do something different here. Uh, again, we're in the midst of the World Cup, obviously. Uh, the I guess two-thirds of the way through match day three in the group stage, we're getting a better indication of the round of 16. But I'm going to take you eight years from now. You already touched on it. Canada, 
uh, North America bid, Canada, United States, Mexico. It's going to start the first game in Azteca yep. in 2026. Technology aside, VAR, all the conversations, can you wrap your head around what this is going to look like, what it's going to mean? I mean, the early estimates were somewhere between 13 and $16 billion for the United States alone. I mean, that's just the money generated. Um, but just for that next generation, because you and I were still, I, I, I'd like to think, youngsters, even though we were teenagers in 94, yep. and seeing the momentum that caught fire, that turned into Major League Soccer, that afforded us the opportunity yeah. to become professional soccer players, to think what this league could be in 2026 and the opportunities generated for that next generation is, is pretty incredible. Uh, I had a conversation with um, my homegrown players uh, when we were in L.A. playing, playing against L.A., and... Um, there was about 75% of it that obviously we won't talk about. And a part of it was you're going to be roughly 28, 27 years old yeah. when this World Cup is in America, Prime. is in our region. You know, this should be a goal of yours. So to me, um, I think it's unbelievable. And I think that it should, just from a motivation standpoint, from kids who are in academies right now, from my son, yeah. you know, my son will be 21 years old. You know, will he be good enough? Who the, who the heck knows? You know, but he's going to be in that realm, in that age that he could be playing in front of his friends and family. And, you know, as much as coaches motivate and success motivates, this should motivate whatever generation we're talking about, whether it's the right now 15, age 15 through 23, let's mm -hmm. say. Anybody in that realm right now should be literally going, you know, ahead in the calendar, eight years. Take them, take them 20 minutes to go all the way through there. Circle that beginning of that tournament and the tournament and say, this is my goal. How am I going to get there? Mm. And, and to me, that, that's invaluable. Can we include Soto and Ledesma in that conversation as well? Oh, gosh, yeah. Think about I, those two kids. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, Don't I let your had, heads get too big. I haven't had that conversation with them yet, Don't but uh, those two are for sure among many in the academy that, that could be huh? featuring. All right, I'm a Speaking of uh, their heads getting too big, I'm gonna give you a chance. All right. What? All right. So I noticed the, uh, on your head. I don't want you to tell me what happened. Where did it happen? Uh, this would have happened in Mexico, Mike Pecky. Was it as a, as was it at Azteca Stadium? No. Not no. Even. Okay. All right. <laughs> give me four questions. Okay. This was on your vacation, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah, you yeah. slipped before and said that you dropped your bag off at your room. So you I gave did. me that, right? Yeah. Was alcohol involved? Three tequila shots. Okay. Now, you just dropped, this is not one of the questions. You just dropped your bag down in your room, and then after that, it happened. Yes, correct. Allow this to be not one of the questions. Was it right away? Was it within an hour? You're, yeah, you're, it was within an hour and three tequila shots. Okay. He's so excited about it. He loves oh, this stuff, this by the way. stuff. Okay. Was a door involved? No, no door. Was your son involved? Both of my sons were involved. Okay. Two out of the three. Okay. Was the game of soccer involved? Nope, no soccer. I would say that, here's my guess, okay. here's my guess. I would say that you went down to the beach, you were playing around with your kids, and your one son got in the horse position while you were turning around and your other son pushed you. Nope, nope, That's my I respect guess. how aggressive that was. That's my best guess. You wanna know what it was? I do. There was a whale slide at the pool in Cabo San Lucas. And after three tequila and shots. And after three tequila shots. One of the twists. I finally, I finally get to play with my kids in the pool. I'm not coming to do shows or working late yeah. at night, calling games. I'm just relaxing with my yeah. kids. And I see them having so much fun on this whale slide. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go chase my kids. So I start going down the slide. And it's a pretty big whale slide. You come through the tail, go out the mouth of the slide. And uh, probably about the fifth one, I went head first. That was smart. No, no. That was Don't smart. do head first down the whale slide. So I go head first. And, and as I turn, hit? I got pushed back down and I hit my head, bop, tapped right it. Thing. And split me open. And then right you there. went in the pool water? I went into the pool water, but but <sighs> it wasn't shot? it wasn't dry, it wasn't dripping. It was open though. You it was open. the shot. Yeah, see you see it there? there. You, sh you should be getting about five there. different shots. No, so what I did, you water. want to know what I did? I, I, I ran, I, I got out, My wife, everyone's panicking. I'm like, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Bridging my nose too, wide open, wide open. I walked over to the store, got some of the uh, antiseptic, yeah. or what, washed it out, whatever. Got a little bit of glue, got a couple uh, butterfly And you ran back at it. And I went, 
put it back together. Do you realize the effect that's going to have on your kids? You are Superman to your kids. They're yeah. going to be telling their kids that stuff. Well, and one that, time on the whale slide, my dad dashed his head totally open. Totally did it. But that's why everything's good. But think about it. You, you would Done. do the same thing. You want to know why? Yeah. Because you wouldn't want them. It, it's a teaching moment, right? Like, you, like I messed up. I know I messed yeah. up. But I don't want my kids to be freaked out by the blood. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. Like, but I, I can went, harness I, the emotion. But I, I probably would have went like this. I'm good, kids. I'm good. G give me daddy a second. <laughs> Run around the corner and just fall in a fetal position. And just... With another tequila shot? Help. Help. <laughs> See, that's what happens here on the Mike Pecky Coaches Show. Uh, that's it for tonight's show. Be sure <laughs> to catch Mike and RSL this Saturday on the road in Columbus on the KSL TV app. Uh, hashtag Save the Crew. We'll see you next week.